Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come a singing unto Zion, Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come a singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come a singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. And that is what we are seeing today. The Lord bringing his people home from all corners of the earth. Here they come, the redeemed, singing with joy. It has been their heart's desire to return to Jerusalem and to the land that is their inheritance. It is their joy. And so it's quite a place happening right now. I welcome you to the reading of the word to joyful singing on this November 28. November 28. We're about to wind down November and take off on December. Are you ready? Are you ready? And on this morning, we will be reading Daniel chapter 5. The great prophetic word of Daniel, chapter 5. And oh my goodness, we Daniel is ministering to Nebuchadnezzar. And we have dreams that are happening. All kinds of things are happening that God is giving Daniel wisdom. And he's the only one anointed to bring the answers. How about that? So let's see what happens today. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords. Wow, a new king. And drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. I don't think this is going to go over very well with the Lord God, do you? Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron and wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And then the king's countenance changed, I'll bet. And his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. That is true fear, paralyzing fear when your knees are knocking together and you can't even control stopping them. How about that? God has arrived, hasn't he? The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. The king spoke saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and, and have a chain of gold around his neck and he shall be third, third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came 
They wanted to be that person, didn't they? But they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. And then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. How about this? How about this scene changing from casual drinking out of holy vessels to God has showed up. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians. A lot has been lost, hasn't it? But do you notice this queen was not at the drinking party? When she heard of the trouble, she came in. How about that? Your father, the king, made him chief of the musicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Wow, she has sure faith, doesn't she? And then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. He has himself calmed down a little bit, doesn't he? Trying to get back his authority. And then Daniel answered and said before the king, listen to this answer, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet 
with the dew of heaven. Till he knew that the most high God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints it over whomever he chooses. <clears throat> so Daniel's, <clears throat> before he gives him any interpretation, he's going to run the history that surely this son knew he was there, he was alive. Run the history by him because he's off on a wild party, isn't he? But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. So I speak a little before, and then we read the word that says that was true. You knew all of this, but you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways you have not glorified. And then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the inscription that was written. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eparsen. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. How about that? We need to have the holy fear of God because he can wipe everybody and everything that he wants to out in a minute. He can raise up another. He does what he wants. We move right along now to the wonderful epistle of 2 Peter, Kepha. Kepha is the name for Peter. 2 Kepha, chapter 2, 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. Does that sound like a certain little section of people that think they are in rulership places? 
today? I think so. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them example. Ooh, praise God, we lost connection there for just a second. Thank you, Lord. I will start that sentence. Bringing in the flood of the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Now, I don't know about you, but that's how I feel a great deal of the time, looking at what is happening in America. I feel like my soul is in torment. Don't you? And then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment, and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might, do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Just notice that comparison that Kepha says to us. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. Boy, are you getting these sharp, deep words here? They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey, speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of the prophets. These are wells without water, clouds, carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, 
By him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. And also this one, a sow, having washed to her wallowing in the mire. How about that? Proverbs 26, 11. Mm, mm, mm. We move right along and continue in Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible. And we have another day or so to go. Psalm 119, and we are up to verse 113. Okay, and we are going to start again. Oh, good morning, Scott. Good morning, good morning, giving us all kinds of things here on Mene. I hope I'm saying that right. Tekel, a parson. All right. And he's giving us another deep meeting. I hope you will all read that and copy it down. Write it down so that you have it. You can study it more. All right. We will continue here in Psalm 119 with verse 113. And the, le the next Hebrew letter before this little portion is Samech, Samech. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word, that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe. And I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. And we have another continuing Hebrew letter from their alphabet, Ayin, Ayin. And we continue on with verse 121. Karam Yoman, Miss Jane Karap. Love seeing your name. I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail from seeking your salvation and your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have regarded your law as void. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, yes, more than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. I hate every false way. Praise God, isn't that something? All right, we will wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 28. 
verses 19 and 20. 28, 19 and 20. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread. But he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough. You're either going to work or be lazy, right? A faithful man will abound with blessings. But he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. A faithful man will abound with blessings. If we want the blessings of the Lord, faithfulness must be there. Like we are attempting. We are seeking the Lord, aren't we? We are seeking a closer relationship with him. And we want to be faithful. Making his word number one in our day. Number one. And uh, I'm out here in California with the family celebrating and uh, three hours difference in time. And it is, it has made it harder for me <laughs> to be faithful in reading the word, but we get it in. And uh, next week I will be home on my regular schedule of 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, let's wrap it up in prayer, y'all. Father God, oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we bless you for your word. For your word, Lord, it is the foundation of everything. Everything. You spoke, and it was. And you brought us forth. Our births were written in the book by you. You planned us, Lord, and so we are very grateful with all the hard things of life, we are so grateful, Lord, for your hand in our birth, in our growing up, in the family we were in, in the time that you came and you put your hand on us and, and our whole spirit was awakened with a born again experience. You did that, Lord. You had Holy Spirit come in and Holy Spirit now is with us all the time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. You are our guide. You are a counselor. You are a comforter. You reveal. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we lift up Jerusalem and we pray for her peace today. Peace for today from you, coming down by your holiness to your people, bringing more home today. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. You have a plan for every life. And we lift them up to you, Lord, that they might find that placement, that, that job, that place to live, that calling on their life from you. And they might be about that. <clears throat> Father God, thank you for this nation that you have made again, once again, bringing them home to their inherited land. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you. Lord, I hold up America to you. This land that I love, been good to me. I've been blessed. And so have you, more blessed than any other country in this present age. And Father God, we repent. We repent, Lord, of the sin that we see. We repent of our sins personally. And we repent, Lord, for the sins of this nation. And we'd ask, precious God, that you would come in they, once again, you would come in and you would guide and you would use America yet in many ways for the rest of the world. Cause us, Lord, to give more. Cause us, Lord, to care and to love the people of the world more. 
more cause each one of us to reach out on the right hand side and the left hand side to our neighbors, to those in our families, bringing blessings, praying about it, planning to do something good. Let's be about your kingdom business, Lord, leading people to you, building up, being an addition and a blessing to your kingdom, not a stumbling block. Help us, Lord. Help us to do that. We pray for all the other countries of the world and the people groups. We'd ask, Lord, there'd be a great revival lit by the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn like a blaze across every country, bringing in your harvest, bringing in all the souls that will come into your kingdom. And we give you praise and glory. We thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We will let our lights shine that others may know you and be drawn to you. And all of it to the glory of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Yeshua the Messiah the soon coming king. Let us be looking up, expecting him. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about their day. And please take in Kathy's wonderful graphics. Oh, beautiful graphics. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa, for putting them on YouTube and and doing all the technical things that you do for us. Please take time to read all that Scott has put on for us and write it. I have a little notebook. It says Scott Paddock's notebook. And I write it all down because sometimes we need to have the Holy Spirit revisit us and revisit us, don't we? God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.